All right, hello everybody, it's Bo Hyman with a quick video. I'm just gonna show you what I do with my extra box tops. These are these box here, boxes here that you're seeing that you, you might have a whole bunch of. If you're like me, you save these, you crush the under, you, you crush or recycle the part underneath the smaller insert there, and then you flatten these tops. So what I thought I would do is show you how I tend to get around uh, the, the issue of just storing like a hundred of these things. So for this project you're going to need, you're going to need of course some Gundam box tops, um, preferably all the same size. If you're curious about if they're the same size or not, um, you can just use ones from the same series. You can put them side by side, whatever. I tend to use, I tend to like to collect or build uh, models from the same series, in this case uh, Build Fighters and Build Fighters Try, and they're generally all the same size, at least width, as long as you can get it, get them, you know, get them the same size as, as far as width, or one of, one of the points there, you, you'll be able to uh, hook these together. So I'm using uh, those box lids, I'm using a pair of scissors, some basic tape, if you want to keep these forever, if you think they're really important, you could get some acid-free tape, I'm just using some basic packing tape here, um, but I'm just using a little bit of it and it can always be cut off and that should be it so the first thing you're gonna to want to do is take apart the box lids by using you're gonna to want to peel back this little inner corner um, if you pull the outer one the, the the piece of cardboard that's on the outside you might tear from that if you pull this little tab inside here you pro you basically do less damage to one of the to the outer artwork or whatever. That little tab on the inside is connected only to the inside so it's blank. So pull that up and pull that and it should break apart until you have essentially a little box like it's a flattened box. As you can see there the tabs that I pulled in inward didn't create much damage at all. So you want to get a whole pile of these. You can do them one at a time, whatever you want. I do about five or six at a time. And then uh, you have you have a, just a stack of them like this. So um, I tried to go in numbered order, like now here I have 19 and 20. Um, because the tape, you're just using a little bit of tape, you don't really have a problem with removing, like as, as let's say if you go 19, 20, 21, and then you're missing 22 and then you go to 23, you can go ahead and do that because you can just take the tape out real quick, I'll show you how, and just put your new box in there. Um, but and you're not always going to have, you know, they don't have to run in numerical order, but I'm just saying if you need to insert one later, if you're doing all the, the suits from a certain type, uh, like a gun cannon or something like that, you can, you can uh, remove these. It's just a temporary way to kind of display these box lids. Um, and then you're going to take the good pair of scissors. I always start on this little, the, the little barcode section. By the way, that barcode section, the little number to the right, is 1800. That means it's 1800 yen, which basically translates to 18 bucks, uh, give or take, um, plus tax. So that's a good way to read that, by the way, if you're ever wondering. But you see this little tab here with the little nice indention, indent, indented line there to the right of the 1800. You're going to cut a little bit to the left of that. And the reason you're doing that is you're creating a little, if you, if you cut to the right of that, that flap that goes to, that gets folded on the inside, I'll show you what that means here in a minute, will actually create kind of a warping uh, in the middle and then you're gonna have to cut and blah, blah, blah. And else. So just give cut a little bit of that extra, cut almost to that 1800 point. In fact, you might as well cut to that 1800 point. Some people like to leave those codes and numbers for reference later, but um, I cut about up to that little box that contains the barcode, and then you've got it about right there. Actually, that's pretty. That's a little bit closer, uh, or a little bit farther away. But anyway, that gives you a good idea. You cut a little bit to the left of that indention. Sometimes I have to trim a little bit more, and then if you can't cut that little little bitty part that's still hanging on at the top, you can just tear that, and it tears right off really easy. And then you're going to turn it over. You're going to fold uh, these two big flaps down. Now, if, as you can see, because I'm folding these two big flaps down, they're going on the inside. If I cut to that, those flaps too large, if I didn't cut close enough to that little barcode there, or in, in the equivalent on the other opposite side, when you fold those two left and right flaps over, they'll actually warp. So you want to cut that and give yourself a little bit of room. This is going to save you a lot of headache. You fold them down and then you should get a pretty nice little flat fold like this. Um, so this is how a lot of people store their box lids. They just fold them like this and then stack them, which is perfectly accept acceptable. I like to display some of them just, 
Also, it's kind of fun for, for reference as I'm building the kits. I can look over on my wall. I have about I have uh, I, about three or four of these, room for about three or four of these. So, you know, as I'm building them, I can kind of look up and reference. Sometimes you can actually uh, build the box itself. I've seen some builders do that, attach that to the wall and put your model on top of it, but it's not very stable and I don't want the box to fall. So you're going to take the next box and do these exact same steps, but you're going to leave the bottom flap loose and then you're going to take that bottom flap and you're going to insert it in there in the top over the bottom box's top flap, if that makes sense. So you're essentially just inserting that in the top and then you're going to put a little pieces of tape. You really don't need much at all. These don't weigh a lot. You're only displaying probably five or six at a time. So uh, I guess if you put 20 in a big long row, you might have to use stronger tape. Uh, you, you don't want to use something like the blue painter's tape. That's probably not going to be strong at all. Uh, but I'm using this packing tape as I showed earlier. You can also get a nice acid-free tape so that acid-free means that it won't yellow over time. Um, so if you're really concerned about that, with, these are cheap, you're not going to keep them forever, but think about this, if you end up, ended up ruining the flaps, you still have the front cover art that you could always cut loose and literally frame if it's one of your favorite suits, which is something I'm actually going to do with some of my more exclusive kits. So you insert that into the top and you put a little tape right there and you wind up with a whole, I did five of these in a row, as you can see, and you wind up with a whole uh, little kind of strip there of numerical order, here's my kits in numerical order, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, what's really cool about this is I had a I had a nail in the wall right there, right behind that Power GM one at the top, and I was hanging I think just some basic art artwork on it, some of my drawings. I just took that down, and the flap on the back of the GM uh, uh, the Power GM box actually the flap makes a good little holder, so you can actually just hang it using that flap, nothing attached to the wall, I mean nothing special, and then you can actually kind of adjust it till it's a little bit um, balanced and kind of it's not leaning really bad. As you can see by the, the, the bear guy, the third kit down, it's got a little gap on the, on the left there. That box was actually a little extra wide, I'm not really sure why, possibly because it had a little extra stuff in it, so it didn't quite fit, so I just ended up having to cut the top and bottom flaps in a little bit more than I would have normally did. So you can actually have a box like this one here that is too big. This is a special, one of the special RE100 kits. It's If I hung it the correct way, it would be too thin. It would not be wide enough. And if I hung it the long way, it would be too wide. So you're not going to be able to do it with every, every piece of artwork. I guess you could actually probably trim the flaps to fit whatever you want, or you could allow um, you could allow the flaps or the, allow the artwork to be whatever size you want. I like to have them organized in a nice big long row that looks nice, uh, or you know, relatively nice. And it's a kind of a cool way to hang up your uh, your artwork. So that's what I do with my box tops. I'm gonna have about five of these things hanging in my office here. It's not super nice looking, but it's kind of fun. It shows off the the kits. If anything, you can hang up some of your favorites or hang all the if you have some exclusive, you know, rare kits or something that, you know, you can afford to cut the box tops up, you can do this. And it kind of gets them out from, I mean, because think about it, all we, all we do, all we builders do is we take those box tops and we just shove them under our bed or in our closet or wherever, and they're sitting there forever and you never do anything with them. So that's what I do. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you can try it. Uh, if you have any questions, just let me know. Uh, if you're watching this now, you're probably on my YouTube channel. Go ahead and subscribe. I don't do as many videos as I used to do. Uh, but I've been videoing for a long time, so if you have any questions, holler. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.